Hope, uh, the Greek poet Pindar writes, is the pillar that holds up the world. And we need pillars so often. The great interruptions of life, the great struggles, can leave us completely disoriented. What was is no more. And what is to come, if anything, is unclear. All the things we depended on to keep us safe, to show us the way, to give us a reason for going on, have disappeared. We find ourselves on a wet, gray slope of sliding clay, being towed under, being swallowed up and taken down, no tow line to save us. Who has not known? this helpless, sinking feeling. Who has not known the God of absence? Who has not felt abandoned by God sometime, some way? The ancients called it the dark night of the soul, this process of shedding everything in life but God. It's the moment of personal crucifixion in which we finally say out loud what we most fear, that there is no God. At least not here, not now. Then Jesus wail, oh my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Becomes a personal cry of our own. We doubt the God of losses. We doubt the notion of any God at all. We certainly doubt that God has anything real to do with us. Sitting on the banks of the creek that summer, psalms in hand, that summer of my appointment as third cook at a children's camp, rather than to the creative writing program at Iowa State University, I struggled long and hard between the value of what I wanted and the value of what I now had. And God had become a question mark, not a certainty. My body went on living, but my soul had died in a darkness so thick I could not even begin to see through it. But the mystics had also taught that this dark night is a necessary moment in the development of the soul. Sure of the absence of God, we actually become aware of the presence of God. It is the paradox of faith. It is the paradox of faith. By losing everything, we come to the realization that everything is far less than we think it is and far more than we ever dreamed it would ever be. In the end, everything is what cannot be taken away, what cannot be lost, what will not fail us in our hope. Darkness is the winter of the soul, the time when it seems that nothing is growing. But winter, we also know, is the fallow time of the year. Winter is the time when the earth renews itself. And so it is with struggle. Unbeknownst to us, then, perhaps struggle is the call and the signal that we are about to renew ourselves, whether we want to or not. Struggle is what forces us to attend to the greater things in life to begin again when life is at its barest for us, to take the seeds of the past and give them new growth. We fear darkness and we avoid it. It threatens our confidence. It jeopardizes our sense of self-sufficiency. We lose control in darkness. We become pawns in the hands of the great unknown. And then, just then, we begin to believe in God in a whole new 
way. Darkness is the call to faith, and the kind of faith we demonstrate under pressure is what, in the end, really counts. I saw a kind of faith once that defied all the psychology I'd ever been taught, all the theological definitions I'd ever learned. It seeped into my own faith life like mist. It illuminated my own dark places thereafter, and it clung to my soul like ether. She was writhing on the floor in her bedroom by the time I got there. Her elbows were tight against her ribs. Her fists were clenched and hard. And she was rolling back and forth on the floor from side to side and moaning. She was a very gentle woman. She was a kind of Dresden doll. She'd been a first grade teacher all her life. She had reared generation after generation just by the lilt of her smile. And years later, they were still coming back to adore her. But she was also manic depressive, bipolar. She had been in and out of hospitals all her life on one medication or another for years. The pain, the gloom, the despair, the depression, all had become part of the routine of her life. But for all the regularity of it, I had never seen it this bad before. I got down on my knees beside her, and I took her by the shoulders. Come on, Tracy, I said. It's time to go to the doctor again. And the wail came from the very deepest center of her. No, she insisted. No, don't make me do that. I can't do that. I hate that. So I began to rock her a little in my arms. Tracy, I crooned, the doctor is worried about you. He wants you in the hospital. And I felt her stiffen. I know he's worried, she sobbed. He won't believe me. He thinks I want to commit suicide. I've tried to explain to him, but he won't listen. And she shuddered, and I could, I could feel the deep breath. Joan, tell him, you tell him. You tell him I would never do that. I have too much faith in God to do that. I couldn't see her face for the tears on my own. She was a very holy woman, and I knew she was telling the truth. She really did have too much faith in God to do that. She knew she was not being punished. She was not being abandoned. She was not being tested. She was not being scourged. She knew she was sick. And she knew that God was with her in the midst of the darkness of that kind of sickness. The God who turns red lights green is not the God Tracy worshipped. The God who give, gives points for good behavior is not the God she knew. Her God was the loving creator in whose energy and life we live and move and have our being, however and whatever our being is at any given moment. It's faith in this God that raises us from the tombs of oppression and sadness, and want, and fear, and pain, to begin again doing our part to make the world a laughing, loving place. What are we called 
to believe and in whom. We're surely called to believe that God who is everywhere is with us. And we're called to believe that this God is energy and love and light in darkness. Not the grand inquisitor, not the great circus master, not the indifferent professor who does distant research on our lives. God is the one who made for us a good world and walks with us to hold us up as we go through it. Sometimes in the face of the God of life, the most faithful thing we can do is simply to keep on living. Ah, yes, hope is the pillar that holds up the world.